Okay. Rahman Rahim. Hello, everyone. Uh, you are so welcome again in the other Academy Zoom meeting. And we are joining again our line of continuous ophthalmic education. Uh, and, and they are, uh, uh, my, my room, my, and my room or my academy is interested in the field of the anterior segment surgery, including the refractive and the cataract surgery. And we are honored to have today uh, one of the pyramids because in Egypt we have a pyramid. So we have today uh, the biggest pyramid in the cataract surgery and especially his innovations and his ads in this field, which makes um, his innovations make uh, the, uh, the sophisticated uh, correct concepts so easy. So let's um, keep our time to listen to him. We have today Professor Steve Archinov, and everyone knows the Archinov shot cell technique. Uh, and and his his name is a, a branded a branding name in the field of cataract surgery concepts and understanding. So, Professor Steve Archinov, Professor of Ophthalmology, Toronto University, Canada, and he is one of the corners of the Alcon uh, cataract devices uh, about the medical engineering and about the concept of the fecal dynamics in these machines. And uh, thank you, Dr. Steve, for getting us your precious time to, to teach us how to do the cataract surgery in, in, uh, in, the, in the safety ways and also in the, um, the, the simpler and, and the, the precise ways to get a very good outcomes. Thank you, sir. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Hossam. Um, you have to enable my screen sharing. Yeah, okay, you're now allowed. Okay, now I can do it, okay. Yes. So I will just share my screen. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the idea of soft shell techniques and how the tri soft shell technique evolved. So the question of course is why do I wanna talk about this? Well, I hope you'll see as I go through this that we tend to look at how we set our phaco machine, but most surgeons don't spend that much time looking at about uh, the OVDs they use and how they use them. But I submit to you that using your OVDs probably makes as much or more difference to the outcome for the cataract surgery and the cornea after surgery than anything else that you do. So creating a better environment for the surgery really gives you a, a better result. So I'm going to talk to you about the evolution of tri self shell teak and, and some of the good points about it. So the first thing to understand is that we have lots of different OVDs and they're all very different and they do, do uh, different things. And we do three different things really with OVDs in the anterior chamber. One of them, we try to maintain space and stability when we use our very viscous cohesive OVDs or viscoadaptives like Helon 5, Helon GV, Helon or Provis. But they, they tend not to do some things for us. And for that, we have different OVDs. And if we want OVDs to stay against the cornea and protect it for longer while we have fluid flow, we use uh, dispersive OVDs. And our dispersive OVDs, the best ones are viscoat, helindicote, and hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. And then also, when we do surgery, you have to understand that OVDs, particularly the ones in group one, the viscous cohesive ones, tend to be about a million times more viscous than water. And it's much more difficult to do surgery in an environment that that's viscous. And so we want to have a small space where we just have either balanced salt itself or a solution of some drug like xylocaine phenylephrine within the balanced salt solution, allowing us to do surgery in a place that has minimal resistance while the eye is stabilized by the OBD. So the tri soft shock technique, which you see here was published by Richard Norman and myself in 2013. And here's the paper. And in the paper, there are a number of drawings like this, which compare all the different types of soft shell techniques and relate them to each other. So that once you learn the basic idea of the tri soft shell technique, you can then see how the other ones derive from it. And you can actually do any one of them you like uh, more intelligently because you understand how they're derived. So here I'm going to show you that the tri soft shell technique really came about as the idea of doing soft shell technique and ultimate soft shell technique together 
So we'll start first with the idea of soft shell technique where we have a layer of a viscous uh, cohesive OVD in the center and a dispersive OVD up against the cornea. When we do the surgery, the viscous cohesive OVD comes out with the IA, but the dispersive OVD, which now has a very smooth layer created by the fact that it's pushed apart by the viscous cohesive OVD, uh, that layer will stay against the cornea throughout the surgery. So uh, the soft shell technique was shown to be uh, valuable, particularly in a video done by Izaharu Suzuki of Japan, when he won the best of the best video at the ASCRS in 2017, with a video entitled Observation of Anterior Chamber with a slit lamp during cataract surgery. And he showed how soft shell technique protects the endothelial cells far better than any other single type of OVD. So it does work. <clears throat> So why does it work? Well, with soft shell techniques, we combine very non-viscous OVDs like water with very viscous ones like Helon GV, Helon 5, or one of those. And by having very different OVDs, very fluid ones like air flow with the speed of the wind, whereas very viscous ones are like the glass in the window panes we see in European churches and the old churches that only precess slowly and are a bit thicker in the bottom because they change very slowly over per century uh, flowing very, very slowly. So if we stream OBDs together, we can get the benefits of both the easily flowing ones and the ones that are more rigid at the same time, and they offset the deficiencies of each other at the same time. So the idea is that we place the cursive on the surface of the lens first, and then behind it, along with the cohesive, inject it, the dispersive out again, and then do the surgery. So I'll show you here a video made by Thomas Oding. Uh, injects a dispersive and look how sort of rad uh, when he injects it into the eye in the surface of the lens. And then he's gonna come back behind it and right on the very center, it's smooth and all the little wrinkles come together and form two nice layers. Makes it much easier. So then the soft shell technique has been found to be useful, not just for regular back surgery, but for all kinds of complications. and difficult some of those, because basically the more complex the case is made it to be, the more the use of multiple OVDs will make it easier to do it. So here's a case where you see we have uh, some bro broken zone to cover the zonules, then come by behind it with cohesive and you that pushes the dispersive and this back put a contention ring in the eye and the case becomes an easy case rather than a very difficult one. So for for that Daniel's here and he's going to come and he's going to inject the dispersive along to cover for you know I would have made the incision instead of where he did to get better access, but he did the incision there. The case becomes a relatively easy case. So there are, we also have another complicated problem when you make a hole in the posture capsule. Now all holes start off as small holes. So if you keep the phaco in the eye and then you surround the hole with a dispersive OVD so in a circular fashion, you tend to push back the capsule gently and you push the vitreous in towards the center. And then the viscous cohesive goes until it balances the pressure in front and behind the eye. You then do a posterior capsular excess, push a little more, and you have the vitreous going back behind the hole as well as some of the dispersive. And you can do the case uh, under low flow without any problems really. So it allows you to take a case where you think you're facing a disaster of a hole in the posterior capsule, and really you can make it quite easy. Not totally easy, but easier than it would otherwise be. So when we talk about a posterior capsular excess, we have to consider now what happens if we do break the capsule? Well, we rely upon the anterior capsular excess. And I wanna just explain to you that the, it's very important to understand how big the anterior capsular excess should be, because if you go through all the mathematics, you can figure out that if you make this anterior capsulotomy bigger than 4.7, you cannot easily capture a six millimeter optic lens in that capsular excess. 
So I never make capsulotomies, whether with Femto or FACO, bigger than 4.7, because just in case I have a problem later in the surgery, I want to be able to tightly capture a lens inside the capsular axis so that it's stable. And at the end of the case, I can put my vitreous cutter in the anterior chamber and cut out any vitreous if it's there, or the IA to remove OVD without disturbing the lens because it's tightly held by the capsular axis. So then, now let's talk about the ultimate soft shell technique. This is a technique we're going to add to the soft shell technique to get the tri soft shell technique. This is a technique where most of us understand it as putting a, a viscoadaptive in the eye and then injecting right through it to put a layer of balanced salt and doing the capsulotomy in the balanced salt layer while the viscoadaptive pressurizes the entire eye as if it was full of viscoadaptive alone. So the reason we decided to make a soft shell type technique for this was because when you use the viscoadaptive, the viscosity to try to do a capsulotomy is so difficult, it's 10 million times the viscosity of water, that surgeons who tried it in the beginning complained that it was very difficult to do a good capsulotomy. But the advantage of viscoadaptives is they're so viscous and so cohesive that they don't mix with the water when you inject water below them. So if you inject balanced salt below it or balanced salt containing xylocaine phenylephrine or vision blue, you don't disturb the OVD layer at all. So the, the vision blue, for example, will not mix and go all over the eye. It just stays in this little tiny space. And then you can do your surgery in fewer steps much more easily. So there's two steps to this. And the first step is the pre step where you inject first to fill the eye like 80% or 90% with the viscoadaptive, and then you come behind that and you go right through it and you inject the balanced salt or xylocaine phenylephrine or vision blue, and then do your capsulotomy within the water-filled space, which is just a thin layer on top of the capsulotomy. It's best to use a needle because if you use forceps and you open the incision, you may lose some of the OVD. If you use a needle, you can put it in along the axis of the incision and you don't lose OVD to do the capsulotomy. But the step I like is the pre-implantation step because once you finish your FACO, you can take the viscoadaptive, inject it just in front of the capsular bag, and then you can fill the capsular bag with balanced salt. As you do that, the viscoadaptive will come up and essentially at the very top or out of the bag. You then inject the lens through the OBD into the water-filled bag. And as you put the IA in, the trailing haptic will fall into the bag and make the case very easy. So I'll just show you that. Here is a case, and I'm going to inject the OVD just in front of the capsulotomy. Then I come back with the balanced salt, inject it right through. You saw the, the wave of it going. It opens the bag, and the bag becomes tight. And then you come back with the lens, and you inject the lens just under the capsulotomy, not aiming for the posterior capsule, because the capsulotomy is lubricated by the OVD, but the posterior capsule is not. It's covered with water. So you inject the lens. This kind of lens opens a bit slowly, so I'm gonna come back now with the IA. And as I put the IA in the eye, since the lens is not totally open, I'm gonna take the IA and I'm gonna use it to nudge the lens into the bag, which is very simple. As I inject the IA, the lens will open and then it fills the bag. By the time the lens opens, the OVD is all out, the lens twirls around, and I stop it at the axis where I think I would like to have it. And then I come out. I'm gonna seal the incision by hydrating it. And you'll see when I seal the second side of the incision, that the incision seals and so the chamber deepens. You see the incision will seal, the chamber deepens, you can see the pupil dilates. And then I'm gonna come around with my dilute moxifloxacin. I use it in 0.4 cc's, so that as I inject it, there's enough volume to open the bag and I can then rotate the lens a little bit if I want. And I'm gonna leave this lens at 180 degrees, so I just rotate it a few degrees and leave it there. So it's all very easy and reduces the number of steps you need to do in cataract surgery and makes them safer. Now, removing OVDs is always an interesting issue because when you look at how an OVD sits in the eye, the lens is like the key to a lock and this very strangely shaped OVD, unless we have a very fluid and cohesive OVD, it won't come out. If you have a dispersive OVD, it'll tend to break and just come out in pieces and leave the OVD here. If you have a viscous cohesive OVD, it will all come out in one piece because it scrolls. But if you have a viscoadaptive, it'll fracture at the edge of the lens and leave this OVD behind the lens. 
So there have been a number of techniques that have been developed to, to remove them. And one of them is the rock and roll technique. That's one I developed in the mid eighties. Um, and it was the first one, most popular one to use because it worked very well uh, for Viscoat and Helon and all of the copies that appeared in the world. So here you see us doing it in a patient in the late eighties. And you can see that I've dyed the OVD with uh, fluorescine, which is done in a lab, not in the, in the surgery. And you see that the OVD comes out as I rock the lens and I roll the IA tip back and forth, moving the flow, it comes out. 